Do you know the most powerful thing which often stands in the way of living the kind of life we want to live? It's not external constraints like money. It's quite often our sense of identity, who we believe we are. And today I'm going to convince you that identity really matters and we can change it. And we can change our life the way we want. And I would like to start by sharing an experience and my own personal story. When I was in, when I was in school as a kid, my most terrifying experience was quite often what other kids love, which is the sports or the games period. Now, typically what would happen is there would be, let's say, a game of football or cricket or something. And there would be two teams and two guys who were like typically the, the big, strong, like the, the uh, good players, they would be chosen as captains. And then they would be asked to pick one person each turn by turn for their team. And whenever that happened, I would be dreading that I would be the last person. I would keep praying, oh my God, okay, I, I hope this guy picks me now but almost invariably, I would be either the last or the second last person. And that was something which, which made me feel really bad, but there's nothing I could do about it. I was very, very lean, very lanky, very thin, not very strong. Probably my hand-eye coordination was not that great. So I wasn't very good at sports. But fortunately, I was good in study. So my, my sense of identity became that of a studious person, but somebody who's not good at games or fitness or sports, anything of that sort. So in my mind, this, the whole, the whole notion of outdoors and sports, it became a very distasteful, very sort of something I don't want to even get close to. Stay in, stay in the domain of studies because that's where I was reasonably okay. And this identity of a person who is not good in sports, who's not good in outdoors, that is what stayed with me. And it, it made me do things or not do things, which I regret later. I never really try to learn any sports. So if you believe that you are not good at sports or not good at games, what would you do? You'd not even try. And if you don't try, you won't get better. So I could not play any games. I was not very, effectively, the whole, the fitness angle was completely missing from my life. So much so that when I went to college, when I, in my first year at IIT, we used to have this thing called compulsory physical activity, where just a couple of times a week, you have to show up for a very light walk and run. And I could not even, could not even like show up and do that. I flung the first time, I cleared the second time. Now, this thing, it consistently came in the way of, of my life. It, um, so as an example, when we were uh, in, in the, the hostels in, in IIT, uh, my classmates would be playing this cricket using this tennis ball. It was a very popular thing. So this, this uh, cricket matches, these would, they would happen all the time, inter-hall cricket, even otherwise, there would be a lot of other sporting avenues available. But I would never, ever take advantage of it because I was too embarrassed. I would go there and make a fool of myself. I was not, uh, in my mind, my identity was, I'm not a sportive person. But fortunately, that assumption, that, that belief, it was challenged when I went for my IPS training, when I joined the police service. As you can imagine, the training is pretty hard. It's quite intense, rig very rigorous. And when I went there, I was honestly, I was very terrified. I was thinking, oh my God, what will happen? Will I be able to run that uh, such long distances? Can I do the obstacle course? Can I do all those things which are physically very, very demanding? But when I landed there for training, I started realizing something. I was pretty good at running. Not, not the best in the batch, but still quite good. In my squad, whenever we did the initial warm-up run, I would al almost always finish first. And then when we had the first cross-country 16-kilometer run, in a batch of about 129 people, if you had asked me before joining the training, I would have said I would be like in bottom 10. I turned out to be, I was number five, which was, well, not, not number one, but still pretty good. And then I started enjoying these outdoor activities and gradually, gradually, my sense of identity started changing. I no longer believed that I am a guy who's terrible at outdoors. I started believing that, okay, I'm a fit person, I'm a fitness guy, I can run, I'm a long distance runner. Even today, decades later, I run at least 10 to 12 kilometers a couple of times a week. And today my identity is not the same as it was when I was a kid. I think of myself as a, as a fit guy, as a, as a runner. Now this, 
small change of identity is actually, it gives a clue to something very, very critical, which is that in life, quite often, we just get stuck. We, we put labels on ourselves. I'm not good at this. I'm good at that. I'm not good at music. I'm not good at painting. I'm not good at this. And those labels that we're putting, they prevent us from even trying. You're, so a negative identity is a trap. If we do not get out of the trap, we will stay there and we will say, of course, I was right. But that's, that's why it's a vicious cycle. If you believe you cannot do something, you won't try and that will become true. So then the question is, can your identity change? Absolutely, I just gave you the story. So then what changes identity? Let's say you want to build the identity of a different person, of somebody who's say very, very fit or very fitness conscious. How do you go from being, let's say, an un somebody who's not very healthy, not very fit to being a, a very fit person? This change of identity will not come by just thinking or visualization, none of that. Very simple, your identity changes when you take an action. Let's say if your identity is that I am a, I am a lazy or, no, or a non-fit person, so to say, if you go for a run or play a sport, that day, just by taking that one action, your identity is challenged, it changes a little bit. All right, now if you keep doing this regularly, if you start playing, let's say, badminton and you play this, uh, play it for a couple of months and you become really good at it, now your identity is no longer I am a lazy or I am an unfit person, now it is that, okay, I'm a badminton player, all right? Even when you talk to other people, you, when they ask you, hey, what do you do? You say, I, you will say with pride, you know, I'm a badminton player, I play badminton, or I, I, or I participated in this, this sport. Action changes identity. But unfortunately, when you have a negative identity, it will prevent you from taking action in the first place. So the key here is to somehow get started. For me, this happened because I went for the IPS training. I was forced to go through the process. But we don't have to wait to be forced. We can make that choice. We can start small, but even a small start, if we keep repeating those actions again and again, it will change your identity. So now I'm going to tell you how to change your identity. If you want to be a different kind of person, first of all, have this clarity in your head. What kind of person do you want to be? What is the new identity you are seeking? Let's say it's the identity of a fit person. So first have that clarity, okay, I want to be an X, Y, Z kind of person, whether it is a fit person or a musically talented person or whatever it is. So that clarity is a starting point. Second thing is start acting as if you are already that person. If it's a fitness thing, if you were already like a fitness freak or fitness guy, what would you do? You would work out regularly, you'll go for runs. Start small, start acting that way. You have to prove it to yourself. Every time you take a small action, your conviction will start changing. And once you've done this thing for months, couple of months, maybe then after that for years, your identity will undergo a complete change. Today, none of us are, we're not the same people we were 10, 20, 30 years back. As time goes, we change. We, we may be the same person physically, but our personality, our identity, it undergoes a change. And it need not be just a spontaneous automatic process. We can consciously change it. And therefore, here's what I want to ask you. If you want to break the trap of negative identity, don't wait for an accident. Take charge. Decide what you want to be and then start taking small actions, proving it to yourself. And gradually, as your identity starts, it starts melting, as a new identity starts getting formed, it'll become easier. And after some time going for those runs or going to gym or working out or playing music, all those things, they will become much, much easier for you. And if you want to make those, sustain those habits for the rest of your life, the most powerful tool is your identity because whatever is your identity, that action you will take regardless of anybody else is watching or not. If your identity is not that a fit person, you may go for a run because some sports teacher, somebody is like, is chasing you. But when they are not watching, you will not do it. But what you believe you are, that you will do, that you will do every single day of your life, even if nobody is asking, nobody is watching. All right. So this is a simple but very very powerful key to sustainable change in your life. And with that, you can make your life anything you want it to be. Let's do it. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much. Bye bye.